you to stop. We ask you to join this word on today. In the name Glory of Jesus, God. we ask you to let this word cause Glory us to, to have hope, cause to us God. to live, Father. Open up our understanding, God. God, we ask you, God, to give your man servant wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Father. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God, God, we ask you, Father, not to let no flesh be glorified. Hallelujah. But, Father, we ask that you be glorified on today, God. Yes, we Jesus. ask that you have your way, God. Have your way, yes, God. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you, yes, Father, for doing God. a new thing on this line. God, we thank you, Father, for the yes, souls that you're God. added to this line. Father, we thank you, God, for the hearers that you're added to this line, yes, God. Glorious, In Father. the name of Jesus, Father, we move every distraction, God, every hindrance, God. Yes, and we glorious, open up Father. the floodgates. We let open up the floodgates, God, Hallelujah. and let your presence move the rain on this line today. Let Hallelujah, your anointing flow, God, in the name of Jesus. That, that we Hallelujah, don't understand, Jesus. Father. We ask you, God, to help us today, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, we have raised your word today. We have raised it, God. Hallelujah, we thank you Jesus. for strength today, God. We thank you. Oh, glory to God. We thank you for strength, Father. We thank you, Father, Hallelujah, for what Jesus. you're doing, God. We say thank you, Lord. Yes, Father. Oh, God, we ask you to bless your people, God. Yes, Bring Father. Bring those, God, that's sick. Build them up. Strengthen them, God. Yes, move Father. Move every infirmity, God. Move every sickness. Yes, move glorious, move Father. Move anything, God, that's not like you, God. God, we come yes, against every sickness, Father. every virus, every, every uh, cancer, yes, every Father. tumor, cell, high blood pressure, low blood pressure. Yes, God, we Father. call them healed today, God. In the name of you, God, Hallelujah. we ask your Father to touch our families, God. Touch our yes, children, God. God. In the name of Jesus, God, we call yes, healing glorious, today. Father. We call restoration today. We call restoring, God. Restore us, God. Oh, God, yes, God. restore unto your people, Father. That, that the kept the room have come in and, and ate yes, us, God. God. Restore our peace, God. God, restore our hope, God. Yes, restore God. it, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, help us to forget about the past, God. Yes, Father. And focus on what you're doing now, God. Help us to embrace you, God. In the yes, name of Jesus, Father. help us to draw now to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, help us, oh God, to seek your face while you may yes, be found, Father. Father. And we praise and we give you glory and we give yes, you honor, God. Father. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are Hallelujah, welcome. Jesus. Oh God, we welcome you on this line today. Yes, today. Father. Father, we bless you today, God. Oh God, we give Hallelujah. you honor and we give you glory, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for counting us worthy, God. Thank Thank Hallelujah. You, God, for doing a new thing, God, in the name of yes, Jesus. Father. Add to this land, God. Add, God, call them from the north, east, west, and south, name God. Of Jesus. Add to this land, God. Strengthen those that want this Glory land, to God. God. In the Glory name to of God. Jesus. God, I Glory give you to praise God. today. I give you honor, God. Glory I to thank God. you for your man, servant, God. I ask you, Glory God, to God, to take him higher in your word, God. In the name I of Jesus. I ask you, God, to speak to him on today, God. Oh, God, open up oh, the Father. knowledge, God, and begin to speak to him, Father. In the yes, name God. of Jesus, Father, we feed the blood of Jesus over this service yes, God. today. We feed the blood of Jesus, God, yes, God, over every weapon that's been formed. We feed the blood of yes, Jesus God. over every attack assigned by the enemy and father we will go forward. we will speak your word boldly and in clarity god and we say thank you Hallelujah. father we give you praise in advance god Hallelujah, we give you praise Jesus. and we give you glory in the yes, mighty god. name of jesus Hallelujah. amen god bless you Hallelujah. Sir. thank you god bless you thank you so very much for the prayer in the name of jesus thank you thank glory you, to god. Thank you, god hallelujah father let there be healing amongst your people let there yes, be deliverance, God. let there be healing, let there be breakthrough in the, in the name, name of the of Lord Jesus. Jesus. We celebrate you, holy God. We celebrate you, excellent yes, Father. God. We celebrate you, we celebrate you in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done. Let your glory be revealed. Let your mystery be made known in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us. 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 Have mercy upon us, God. In the name of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Hallelujah. Without you, we are nothing. Seeing you that we live and we move and we have our being. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that you will look upon your people everywhere. Look upon all your people who are struggling 
in the name of Jesus. Don't let the enemy have the mastery over them. Don't let the enemy have God, their minds, the name of Jesus. But I pray that you would come through for them and they are crying out to you and they are saying, Holy Father, look on us. Father, look on them. Look on them. Look on them, your little ones. Look on them in the name of Jesus. Father, hear their cries. Hear their groans. Hear them, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Raise up your people even now. Raise them up. Raise up Kenny Roberts, SQ Senior. Raise him up, God. Raise up your people. Raise up your people. Raise up your people. Raise up your people. Raise up your people, Father. Raise them up, Holy God. Raise them up. Raise them up. Raise them up in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we broadcast your name to this, your people, that they will know that you are God and beside you there is no other. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We love you today. We glorify you today. We magnify you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, excellent God. Oh, wonderful Savior. Have your way even right now and see about your people, God. In the name of Jesus. And they're crying out to you and they're looking to you. Oh, Father, and they're saying, Lord, come to our, my life. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. In the name of Jesus. Father, locate them and come into their hearts. In the name of Jesus. Let there be breakthroughs. Let there be salvation. Let there be healing. Raise up that man from that oxygen tank. Raise up that man out of that medical induced coma. Raise them up, God. Raise up your little ones. Raise up that little boy. Raise up that little boy that's on oxygen. Raise up that girl. Raise up that mother who's in labor. Raise them up, God. They're yours. Raise up your little ones. Raise them up, God, in the name of Jesus. The man, the woman, incarcerated, even right now. And they're crying out, Lord, is there any help? Lord, have mercy upon me. Locate me. Father, locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Let your word come to them in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. God bless you, woman of God, evangelist. Word, God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with us today and, and leading us in prayer. Amen. From the lifeline, we thank God for you. Amen. God bless you, Jennifer, woman of God. The woman of God, Jennifer Harris. God bless you. Wanda Flowers, God bless you. Amen. All of you, the Lord's children, I thank God for you. Thank God for your presence. I thank God for you being here with us on today. Amen. God's doing some great things, and we're excited about him. I'm excited that you're here. Amen. And I do apologize for the days that I've been missing in action. Uh, amen. I know that sometimes <laughs> you don't... Uh, uh, finish your task in time, and I've been that person that uh, I, I don't like to be late uh, for what I'm doing. I don't like to be late, especially when it comes to Bible study. So I guess I've kind of spoiled myself that uh, I know some people say it's better late than never, but I hate to just throw things together and then try to come forward. I, I hate to do that, but uh, y'all pray for me. Amen. Amen. Had to do some um, some serious, serious work. It's not finished yet, but we still have some other thing we, we got to do. Uh, Minister Kim, God bless you. So good seeing you on the line with us. Amen. We're praying for souls, people. We're praying for souls. We have been praying, and we're going to continue to pray for souls that the Lord would give us a great influx of souls. Amen. And, and uh, we have to be mindful that when we begin to ask certain things and ask the Lord to do certain things for us, make sure that your heart is right. Make sure that your heart is right and it comes from a good place. And I know it may sound good. Yes, it sounds good. We want souls. Bring in the souls, Lord. Let them come. But then you might want them to come so that the church bank account can get larger. You may want them to come so that you have more tithe payers. You may want them to come uh, so that uh, you have a larger congregation. These are not the reason uh, for the Lord to save souls and bring them in. That, those are not the reasons. 
but that the Lord would, uh, amen, bring in out of the darkness those who have lost their way, those who could not find their way. Bring them out of the darkness. That person that's nearest to hell now, that person that, that on a suicidal mission, uh, those persons who do not know the Lord as the Savior. The Lord says, preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is our mission, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when you don't want no souls lost, when you don't want no souls lost, it would behoove you to seek the Lord on a continual basis and pray for an influx of souls that God would save them, that God would deliver them, that God would bring them into his fold, not to line your pockets, not because you have some other motive, but that they will escape hell's fire, that they will escape the devil's torture in the name of Jesus. So when you begin to pray with the right motive, God will save them. God will bring them in. God will deliver them. And because we are uh, the light of God. We are his light. And so if our light is not shining, we need to go back to square one, maybe change our spiritual bulbs. <laughs> change our spiritual bulb because if they're going to see God, they're going to see God through our life. If they're going to see Christ, they're going to see Christ through our life. And so we just need to be about our father's business and do what we need to do. We just need to do it. Stop doing everything else and just start being about the Lord's business. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you all. God bless you. My sister just came in a few moments ago and brought me some grape juice. She told me it's good for my health. So if it's good for my health, come on. Keep bringing it, sister. <laughs> keep bringing it. <laughs> Uh, my little sister, amen. I thank God for, amen, the Lord has blessed us with, blessed me with four sisters and eight brothers. Good God, amen. It's good being coming from a large family. Y'all pray for me, all right? Listen, it's good being here. Thank God for all that the Lord is doing. It is indeed marvelous in my eyes, and we're going to get into the Word, all right? Uh, I can't say yesterday, but on the last time we were speaking, the last time we was in Bible study, we're using the same topic. We're using the same topic from uh, the other day. <laughs> the other day. Uh, stop looking for change to happen. Make them happen. You have the power. That's what we were talking about on the last time. So today we're going to continue in that vein. Stop looking for change to happen. Make them happen. You have the power. Um, we didn't really get far in our lessons, so I need to be uh, making progress so that we can get at least farther than we did the last time. This is Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 38. And uh, our lesson outline, I'll give you um, them again. It was six subtitles, six subtitles, six subtopics. Um, Matthew 9, verses 1 through 8, deals with God has given power to men on earth to counsel the assignment of your enemies. <laughs> I want to jump in that. That's why I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I want to just jump right in that and deal with it. We talked about that on um the last time we were here, uh, verses 9 through 13. Are you hospitable enough for Jesus? Verses 14 through 17. You are not Pharisees. Stop trying to be like others. Be the original of your kind. Be the original of your kind. Be the original of your kind. Verses 18 through 22. Touch Jesus with your situations and deliverance shall be your portion. Touch Jesus with your situations and deliverance shall be your portion. 18 through 22. 
23 through 31. What else is needed in order for your faith to work for you? What else is needed? What else is there in your life that's needed in order for your faith to work for you? That's up to you to do that inventory. Maybe it's an inventory. Maybe it's a diagnostics check. Maybe it's just a maintenance check on your life. Maybe you're just checking everything and you might just have to hit a reset button, a spiritual reset button. But whatever it is, whatever it is, the question is what else is needed in order for your faith to work for you or to start working for you? And you come to that place. Come to that place. Bring yourself to that place. What, what else is needed? What else is needed in order for your faith to work for you? And finally, finally, our final subtopic, our Savior is in need of workers, believers, who are not so needy or fearful. We're going to get to that. And I know somebody might be saying needy. We need to be needy. We need to be totally dependent upon him. Yes, we do. That's not what I'm talking about. So we'll talk about that a little later. All right. Objective. The road to ministry requires absolute um, dedication to God. The road to ministry requires absolute dedication to God. Now, you know, I've got to touch on some of last week's lesson. I've got to do it. I'm trying to get away from it, but I can't. <laughs> it's called in my name. It's called in me. Come to me, James. So God has given power to men on earth to counsel the assignments of your enemies. And the lesson started off, and he entered into a ship, passed over, came into the other uh, city. Behold, they brought a man. They brought him a man sick of the palsy, laying on a bed. Jesus, seeing their face, said to the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sin be forgiven thee. That's how he addressed that issue. He addressed that issue. Son, be of good cheer. Thy sin be forgiven thee. He did not address that issue as saying, um, uh, uh, I heal you from sickness and disease. He didn't say, uh, 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 be delivered of this palsy. He didn't say, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, be uh, healed of this palsy. Get up and, and give God glory. He didn't say that. But what he did say is, uh, son, be of good cheer. That sin be forgiven him. It is a wonderful thing to know the root cause of failure, of a person's failure. But better yet, before you know the root cause of a person's failure, it is even better to know the root cause of your hindrance, your downfall, your slowfulness, your failures. And when you know the root cause of it, deal with your root cause. And all of us, all of us, all of us who have had some hindrance in life, you already know uh, your, your downfall. You already know your weak areas. You know the great areas. If you know when a, you get a knock on the door, if you haven't paid your bill and you get a knock, all of a sudden you're scared. Why? Because you already know you wasn't doing right. <laughs> I said doing right. You know you should have paid that uh, that bill, but you run in the hide and you put it on uh, cake and donuts. <laughs> yeah, you put it on cake and donuts. So now when the, the knock on the door, you act like, oh my goodness. First thing came to your mind, I should have paid that bill. I should have paid that bill. Well, because you know. Now, I'm just using it for an example. But you know, most of us already know where we've fallen from. Go to our house and do your first work over again. Do those things. Here's the key thing that the Bible says. And always remember that. If you never, ever remember anything else that I've said, remember this. First of all, do not let people... Do not let people put you in their prison. Their prison or the things that they need to deal with, the thing that they need to let go of, or the thing that have been wait for them might not be wait for you. I'm just going to say that. The things that have been wait for them might not be wait for you. You may not have a problem 
with women or with men. But your problem might just be with money or things. So everybody have their own little things, little hindrances, their little uh, 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 lust that mean that intense, deep desire to have a certain thing. Well, everybody have those certain things, but whatever your weakness is, you already know what it is. You already know it. I, I know that smoking marijuana or smoking anything is not my weakness. That, nope, don't do that. <laughs> I know drinking is not my weakness. I know that. It, it, you ain't got to worry about people offering me something to drink. It is not a weakness to me. But there are some things in life that I have to pray about continuously. I have to pray, God, don't let these things catch me off guard. And I have to work on them. See, those are the areas that you have to work at continually. You have to work with them. You have to train your mind. You have to train your muscle memory. Train your muscle mem memory to not flinch when you've been caught off guard. Train your muscle memory to not flinch after lust or teasing when you've been caught off guard. Train your muscle memory to not get, don't even lift that eyebrow when those things that you know uh, 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 is a weakness to you. Don't even, uh -uh, don't even give a care, but just pray more. Pray more, become more dedicated. And most of the time, those are the things that you wrestle with the most. You don't worry about wrestling with the shoes or some people wrestle with shoes trying to, oh God, I can't get rid of these shoes. I can't get rid of them. And you keep buying more shoes, more shoes. Just a shoe fetish. Just a shoe fetish. And you just into the shoes. Some people into the suits. Some people into the outfits. Some people into the weaves. Some people into uh, the cars and the houses. And they're just into, uh, they don't go to the mall but they look for those yard sale. They got that yard sale-itis, and they look for them. Well, there are some things that you're going to have to deal with. And they brought this man, uh, they brought him a man sick. He was sick. He had a problem. He was so bound by this thing, this man was sick. Sick of the palsy. And he was laying on a bed. Jesus did not see the man's faith. He was sick. He could not put his faith into motion. He could not activate his faith. But when he saw their faith, said to the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sin be forgiven thee. To know the root cause of his weakness. To know the root cause. We, a lot of us know the root cause of other people's weakness. But we don't know the root cause of our own. I said a lot of people, but not saying everybody that way. Some of you do know your own root cause, but you just won't deal with them. Deal with your root cause. Deal with those things that you know that's plaguing you and want to cause you to be in, in a way that it comes to kill you, to steal you. Don't give the devil your life. What do you mean, give the devil my life? I'm not giving the devil my life. I hate the devil. I hate him with passion. I hate him with fire and brimstone. I hate that devil. Yeah, maybe you do, but you're still giving that devil the keys to your life. How am I giving the devil the keys to my life? When you step out on those territories that are forbidden zone for those who love God. Those who love God. And you step out on those forbidden territories, doing those things that you know uh, is going to play against you and going to lead you far away from God. Stay away from those things. Stay away from those things. So, here it is. One of the things that you need to always do and always remember this. Always remember this. Don't let people put you in their prison. That's what I said earlier. Here's what I mean by that. They have these little things that they try to put on you and they'll try to get you to be condemned because they're condemned. They're condemned with eating a lot of ice cream. <laughs> and they don't want you to eat ice cream. You may eat it during the day, but they got a problem eating it after midnight. But they don't want you to eat ice cream because they know eat ice cream is their weakness. That might not be your weakness. And then they'll try to um, pass judgment on you because you're eating that ice cream. All I'm saying is, 
if the thing you're doing is not condemning you, I'm going to say that again. And God's going to give me that scripture. God's going to give me that scripture. Somebody's going to text that scripture to me. It says, if you're, uh, how do it go? If you're something, if your spirit, I think if your spirit don't condemn you, neither do I. There are certain things in life. There's a lot of things. Sin will condemn you. But then there are some things that you don't even know. And if it does not condemn you, the Lord says, neither do I. If you are not condemned, hear me good on this. If you are not condemned about a certain thing, keep on praising God. Keep on living and keep on praising God. That's not a weight to you. That's not a problem to you. But the moment you start seeking the face of God and going deeper in him and ask him to expose everything in your life that is not supposed to be there. And if God does not expose that particular thing, whatever that thing is, Keep on keeping on. If your heart does not condemn you, God's not condemning you because your heart is going to condemn you first. If your heart is not condemning you, don't be listening to everybody else's condemnation. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't listen to their condemnation. Don't let them put you in somewhere that you don't need to be. That's their weight. That's their setback. That's their hang up. That's not yours. And oftentimes we take on other people's fears. We take on other people's pain. We take on other people's hang up. We take on those things that have crippled other people. But that's not your crippling problem. That's not your palsy. These Guys brought this sick man of palsy, laying on a bed. They were able to bring him because that wasn't their problem. That was not their problem. That was not their problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give me one moment. Give me one moment. First John 3. 1 John 3 and 20. Thank God for people listening. <laughs> Thank, I told you, God going to do this thing. Thank God. Hallelujah. 1 John 3 and 20. Somebody need to just go ahead and text that and just scroll it on Facebook. I, I, I can't do it right now. It's, some people can multitask. I have a problem <laughs> multitasking, okay? So if you get a chance, 1 John 3 and 20, and put that in the little comments so that somebody can see it. It says, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, verse 21, beloved, if our heart condemns us not, they have, um, then have we confidence toward God. In other words, if your heart is not condemning you, don't worry about that problem. What, if somebody else's problem, it's not yours. <laughs> don't take on everybody. Oh, wait a minute. What? You having cramps? Hmm, how come I'm not having cramps? So you want their problems. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that. Walk away. Get away from it. It's not your problem. It's not your problem. These men that was carrying him, that was on the bed, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying on the bed. But they, the one that's carrying him, that was not their problem. They wasn't sick of the palsy. The man on the bed was sick of the palsy. Stop carrying. And when you carry people, it's okay to carry them. It's okay to carry them. But don't be affected by what they're affected with. Don't have what they have. Just bring them to help. Bring them to deliverance. Bring them to healing. Bring them to miracles. Hallelujah. Bring them to that. He says, son, be of good cheer. Thy sin be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemous. Jesus, knowing this thought, said, uh, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For where is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee? The people having a problem with that. Everybody going to have a problem. And the people having a problem with that, which is easier. God bless you, Bishop Timothy. God bless you, Bishop Timothy. God bless you. I see you, sir. I see you. And I thank God for you. Blessed, blessed, be blessed. And uh, the hand of the Lord is upon you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, uh, Wherefore think ye evil in your heart? For where is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee? Or to say, Arise and walk. Arise and walk. So he, he's given 
uh, of the people a choice. Which is easier? To say, arise and walk? Uh, thy sins be forgiven thee. Well, you know they're not going to answer. <laughs> they're not going to answer because they're dumbfounded. They want, to place, pay, they want to place accusations. They want to accuse you. But they don't really want to come to the real answer because they don't really know the answer. And uh, Jesus, but that ye may know, that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. That ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. Listen to me, listen to me carefully. And there are many of you been praying, Lord, give me that power to open blinded eyes, to cast out devils, to unstop death. Just give me that power, give me that authority to do that. If you don't come to understand this passage right here, you can forget it. I'm just saying, I'm going to say that again. If you don't take some time to study this verse right here, 5 and 6, or 4, 5, and 6, if you don't study this and come to a God understanding of what this is saying, you can forget that other stuff. Why? Because in the archives of these scriptures right here, this opens up a canopy of wisdom, a canopy of understanding in order for you to understand what God is saying to you. When you read this, you'll see, let me, let me read it again. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore, think ye evil in your heart. For whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. A lot of people thinking that he's talking about himself. <laughs> he's not talking about himself here. And, and, and it is something that you're going to get to, uh, we get to tomorrow's lesson, and you're going to find out just a little bit more of this, that um, the Lord doesn't mind you wanting to be like your Lord, that you want to be like your leader, that you want to have the mindset of your leader. He doesn't mind that because you're doing his work. You're doing what you was called to do. He doesn't mind that. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth. He's not speaking of himself. He's speaking of you. That the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Then says he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose, departed to his house. And here, verse 8, fulfills that of verse 6. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled. And glorified God. They marveled and glorified God, which had given such power, not to the man Jesus, but unto men. Unto men. God have given power unto men to cast out devils, to open blinded eyes, unstop deaf ears, to lay hands on the sick and they recover. And I thank God for tomorrow's lesson. And you're going to see a little bit more of this, a little bit more clearly how he called his disciples together and he gave unto them power to cast out devils, to lay hands on the sick. In other words, he's giving power unto men. What he's doing here is demonstrating to us that this power works. I'm, give, I'm going to give you this power, but you need to see that it works. You need to see this authority that I'm passing on to you. It works. It works. It works. You've got to walk in this thing, and you've got to know that it doesn't matter whether it's palsy, whether it's um, leprosy, uh, whatever it is. Somebody could be in their house sick. Hallelujah. And a centurion come to you and says, help me. My daughter is grievously sick. And Jesus said, I will come and help them. He said, you don't even have to come to my house. You don't have to just speak the word. My servant, yeah, I said, I said, son, daughter. No, my servant will be healed, is what he said. My servant will be healed. Just speak the word. I, too, am a man of authority. I say to this one, come, and he cometh. I say to that one, come, and go, and he goeth. Jesus marveled and says, I've not seen such faith in all of Israel. And I'm telling you that this is the thing that's going to open doors for you. It's not because you are trying all these gimmicks. And, and, and going to this mountain and going to that closet 
and, 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 and doing all these other things. No, it's getting on your face before God. And, and, and not only on your face before God, but saturating your life with the word of God. Because the more you begin to saturate your life with the word of God, the word of God gives you understanding. The word of God tells you that, that you can. It tells you you can do this. And when you come back to God, you are holding his word to him. Father, your word says, your word says this, and I can do this because your word said this. I can do this because your word does not lie. I can do this because your word says, but that ye may know, that the world may know, that Ludowicy may know, that Jessup may know, that Alabama may know, that Georgia may know, that Mississippi may know, that Florida may know, that the people in those communities may, may know that the Son of Man has power on earth, on earth, to forgive sin. Then says he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose. And he arose, departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled, glorified God, which hath given power, such power unto men. Glory to God. I know that was yesterday. Uh, I said yesterday's lesson. That was uh, the last time we came. So we're going to move a little bit uh, faster. We've already talked about the second subtopic. Are you hospitable enough for Jesus? Uh, Jesus, this is where he dealt with Matthew and um, told Matthew to follow him. And in Matthew's house with the publicans and sinners and uh, scribes, they were all in Matthew's house. And when the Pharisees saw it, he said unto his disciples, Why eatest your master with publicans and sinners? Uh huh. They were haters. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, That they be that they behold need not a physician. If you are righteous, excuse me, you don't need a physician. But they that are sick need a physician. And I I told a, a, a shared a testimony on that day about how someone came to me and wanted to uh, indoctrinate me with their belief. And um, I'm just going to give a little bit of it. And um, it was a battle between Jesus only and Jesus, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that I had to get baptized all over again because I did it wrong. That I got baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost when I should have got baptized in Jesus' name only. And that uh, in my ba the baptism didn't work. It didn't matter. Well, understand, I didn't care whether I got baptized one time or a thousand times. I believe that the first baptism is suitable enough because I believe that. Now, I'm not hung up on baptism. Let me just put that there. I'm not hung up on baptism, but I think that it's a process because if you do not have the man, Jesus, behind salvation, who is the author of salvation, if you don't have him in your life, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're doing because you're not a believer. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't have not invite God in your life, it, it, it's not matters. It doesn't matter whose name you've been baptized in. Are you living that name? Are you walking in that name? And so when he came at me and he was saying that I was wrong, then I gave him my little testimony. Where were you when I was on my way to hell? Where was you when I was on acid? Where was you when I was lost? Where were you when I needed a savior? And I cried, tears dropping from my face. And I'm crying like a baby. Lord, help me. Send me help. Send me deliverance. Come to me. I really need you. I want to change my life. And the Lord sent me, sent somebody to me. And uh, we was going to church and put me in a particular church. And I said, how come he didn't send me to you, send you to me? And how come he didn't send me to your church? And how come he didn't send your pastor to me? If, if, if your way is such the right way when I needed help, how come he didn't send you all to me? Well, he couldn't say nothing about it. And I said, we, we don't need to do that. What we need to do is have Christ in your life. Have Christ in your life. Have the author of salvation in your life. Because if you don't have the author of salvation in your life, and you're living for him, you've already missed the mark. You want to miss the boat. You, you want to uh, bring people who doesn't need a doctor. They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. 
But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He look, you're looking at me like I'm a big sinner. No, go and call uh, the sinners to repentance. Don't leave the righteous alone. If they're righteous, listen, if their heart is not condemning them, we read it. 1 John 3 and 20, we read that in 21. If that's not the problem, don't, don't even worry about them. Don't worry about them. You pray. Keep it going. Keep it moving. Let God deal with them. And if God don't deal with them, who are you? <laughs> who, who are you? Who, who are you? I'm a voice crying in the wilderness. <laughs> All right. Okay, John. Keep crying in the wilderness. <laughs> but I'm telling you, if you would give God the praise and ask God to lead you to people who really need this opportunity, who need him, God would open up doors of opportunity and send those persons who really need him, who have a genuine cry for salvation. And believe it or not, there are people, and they're in your neighborhood. They're all around you. God have not sent you to all the other places to evangelize. He sent you wherever you're planted, and you lay your head. There are people around you, even right now. If God have sent you to those places, go to those places. But wherever you're going, there are people who need the Lord. Don't ever forget that. And you are that light. You have what they need. Give it to them. Don't be so caught up into all these other things. Give them what they need, and they'll live for God. You are not Pharisees. Stop trying to be like others. Be the original of your kind. Then came, and this is 14 through 17, Matthew 9 chapter, 14 through 17 verse. Then came to him the disciples of John. Now I like this, and I'm going to have to revisit this again. Uh, matter of fact, we may have this here discussion a few times, but I'm going to stick with how Matthew look at it. And then maybe when we get into Mark or John, then we'll compile the different views of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see how they view this. All right. But then came to him, the disciples of John saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often? But thy, um, but thy disciples fast not. The disciples of John was coming to Jesus on several different occasions. One time they came to him when um, uh, and, and says, J John sent us here. Are you the one or do we look for another? All right. And that's one incident. But then here's another time that they came to Jesus. So why do we, um, why do we and the Pharisees fast often? but thy disciples fast not. Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples fast not? And this is where we got our title. You are not Pharisees. Stop trying to be like others. Be the, origin, or be the original of your kind. John's disciples. John's disciple, where he was baptizing them into water. John's disciples, who even John himself said, there's one who comes after me whose shoes like just, I'm not worthy to stoop down and loose, but he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and that with fire. All right, but here's the thing. Um, Jesus says unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the day will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man puts a piece of a new cloth into an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do a man put new wine into an old bottle, else the bottle break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottle perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Stop trying to put um, uh, uh, something new into that which is tattered and torn. The only one that can do that is when we come to our lives with our old lives, come to God with our old lives, and Father, repair me, make me over again. Make me over again. Come into my life. Save me. Deliver me. Free me. I need you in my life. And we want him to take out everything that is not of him. Just, just do house cleaning. 
house cleaning. Take it all out. Everything that's not of you, Father, take it all out. And he will do that. And he will make us new all over again. He's not trying to put that, that thing which is new into an old wine skin. Because it will rent, it will tear up, it, 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 we, we, our bodies cannot handle that. And that's why he has to uh, make us again anew. The Bible said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. He has renewed our mind. He has healed us and delivered us from sin, delivered us from shame. And we're constantly trying to put patches. See, when you do it, you're going to patch up the old spot. You're going to patch up the old a uh, old wine skin, but when you let him do it, he know how to make it new all over again. It's just like the potter who's on the wheel, but when it was marred, he made it again another. Go back and look at it. I often said he made another vessel. Now it, he made it again another. He made it, it, that same one that he was working on. He made it again another vessel. He kept, the same, he kept the same vessel. He didn't throw it away. He didn't discard it. Jennifer, he did not discard that. He made it again another vessel. Amen. Verses 18 through 22. Touch Jesus with your situations and deliverance shall be your portion. Touch Jesus with your situations and deliverance shall be your portion. Jesus was in Matthew's house and sitting. But while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler worshiping him, worshiped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come, lay thy hands upon her, and she shall live. Jesus arose, followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. It doesn't matter the mission that Jesus is on. He still have time for another healing. He still, even if you called him in Brooklyn and you said, Father, I need you. Send Jesus, I need you here in Brooklyn. Guess what? He still have time to work in Georgia. He still have time to work in Massachusetts. He still have time to work in Africa, in Italy, and, and, and Haiti. He still have time to work else, elsewhere. Yes, he was on his way to a certain ruler's house. But before he even got to the ruler's house, hallelujah, a certain woman which was diseased with an issue of blood. And I like it. It said a diseased Diseased with, with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him, touched the hem of his garment. Why do I like this? Because this let us know that if Jesus cast it out, if Jesus said, be healed, be delivered, if Jesus cast out devils, if Jesus is healing uh, somebody of sin, of sickness, of blindness, of fevers, of whatever he's healing them of, that tells you it is not supposed to be there. Whoever he's delivering, it is not, that is not a norm. They were in a situation that was abnormal. And he heals everything that is abnormal. If it's brought to his attention, he will deal with it. And why are you dealing with your infirmity? Why are you dealing with your weaknesses? Whatever that is that you are dealing with, why are you dealing with them? When Jesus has come to set you free of those things, if he healed the man of palsy, He'll heal you of your cancer. If he healed a man of leprosy, he will heal you of your sugar and your diabetes. If he healed, uh, 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 cast out devils, or people that had devils in it, he cast them out, certainly he can open your eyes and open your ears. He healed all these other people. Why won't he heal you? Are you not a, a part of the covenant? Are you not a daughter, a son of Abraham by covenant? And if you are, yes, he will heal you. But stop doubting. Don't doubt. Let him heal you. Let him deliver you. Let him give you that breakthrough that you need. 
and that you desire of him. He will give you that breakthrough. Hallelujah. Touch his garment. Touch the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, and this is where faith is produced. This is where faith starts speaking because she said within herself, faith generates on the inside. Faith starts with your thinking. Faith starts with what you say. I can do this. I got this. Faith starts right there in that tunnel, in that chamber, when you start having personal dialogues with yourself. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Faith starts. Faith originates right there. Faith originates in that secret chamber, the place where you're saying, hallelujah, if I can do this, if I can touch him, if I can touch him, if I can simply touch him, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, hallelujah. When he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Now, this is another story. Now, this is, uh, this is Matthew telling us this side of the story. Mark will talk about it. Luke, uh, John, but, but hear what they have to say and how they talk about it. They may go in a little bit more depth. That doesn't make what Paul, um, Matthew's saying wrong if one give a little more detail about it. This is their take on it. It's as if there's a hundred people who came to a prayer conference and you ask them to, um, uh, to each night take notes. Take notes each night. And they're going to be there, I, I almost said too many days, but uh, three days. Three days at a prayer conference and you ask these people to take notes in their own thing. They're not copying off nobody's paper and then compile the notes at the end. Everyone's going to have a different point. Everyone's going to have a different point of view. They're going to see something different. Even if they sit side by side, they're going to see things from different angles. They're not going to see it the way you see it. It will not come exactly the same. Everyone will have their points of view. And this is what Matthew is saying. Matthew looks at this this way. And then there are other writers who will go in a little bit more detail about this uh, from a different perspective. But Jesus turned him about when he saw her. He said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole that very hour, from that hour. And that's something else you want to look at. All this prolonging. Oh, they couldn't get healed today. Well, God's going to gradually do it. He's going to gradually do it. Hmm. He's going to gradually do it. All right, perhaps next week by this time, you're going to get your breakthrough. Now, if the Lord tells you, Seven days, three days, 40 days, 14 days, whatever, that your change is going to come. And if God tell you that, then stand on that. But when you're praying and when you are uh, 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 praying for somebody and they are at the door of mercy, really needing help, here's what happens. Their healings or their deliverance comes in progression to the point that is according to your faith, so be it done unto you. So if, if you're going to be healed in progression, that's according to your faith. But why not step up that? Step up that uh, 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 punctuality. Step up that, 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 that time. Step it up. How do you step it up? Increase your faith. How do I increase my faith? Whatsoever thing is pure, whatsoever thing is lovely, whatsoever thing is just. I don't remember how to, all, all the verses, but if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, then think on these things. Put the word in your mind, in your heart, daily. Consume it daily. Consume it often. And the more you consume this word, the more you're going to want to know more about it. God bless you, Kenneth. Kenneth Perry, I see you. Amen. The more you Put his word, digest his word, eat his word. And the more you do it, the more you'll be on it. The more you do it, the more you'll be on it. The more you do it, the more you want more. 
The more you want more, the more you want more than that. And you start doing more. And your mind becomes like a sponge soaking up this word. And then you start looking. You're anticipating a move. You start anticipating a healing, anticipating the glory of God. Your mind is there to hear him, to speak to him. He's speaking to you. And you start seeing these things happen before your eyes. And it's glorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a glorious thing to be in this place. It's a glorious thing that your life put demands on the word of God, not your mouth. Don't let your mouth put demands on heaven, but let your life put demands on heaven. There's a big difference. When your life put demands on heaven, all of heaven is take note, taking note. But when your word out of your mouth is putting demands on heaven, your life may not even add up with it. I command you in the name of Jesus. But your life may not be there. Your life might be raggedy. You may have been living a raggedy life, but you're still trying to put demands on something. Mm -mm. Let your life put demands on heaven. Live that life before God, and everything else will become subordinate. Everything will bow down to you. By you, Honoring God with your life. Honor him with your life more than you do with your mouth. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. And watch God do some awesome things for you. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. And it happened then because her faith was, I need this now. Her faith says, I'm tired. I don't want progression. Her faith says, I've been to all these doctors and they've took my money. I've been to doctors after doctors after doctor, and everyone I went to, I had to pay them money and they still didn't get it right. But how long did you go to them? 12 long years. 12 long years. I've suffered with this, uh, this issue of blood. It was a blood issue. Constantly bleeding. And have never been cured of this thing. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And her faith says, this has got to happen now. I don't want progression. I don't want things that's going to slowly ease its way in. I want it now. Bring your faith to that right now. Have that right now kind of faith. And guess what? You are the master of your faith. You're the one who wields your faith in areas. And uh, 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 the word of God or the thing that you unlock in the spirit realm is going to respond to your faith. To your faith. To your faith in God. To your faith in your response to the word of God and how well you believe him. That's what's going to take place. What else is needed in order for your faith to work for you? What else is needed? What else is needed in order for your faith to work for you? And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrel, now he left, the lady been healed. He's on his way to this uh, certain ruler's house and a lady get healed while he was on his way. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, and the minstrels, the musicians, those that are uh, yeah, making music, when he, and they making the noise. He said unto them, give place. For the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. <laughs> they said, they stood there. We've been here the whole time. And he going to come in and tell us this maid is not dead. <laughs> and they're laughing. You know, this maid is not dead. This maid is dead. There's no pulse. There's no heartbeat. We've been here for some four or five hours now. And you're just getting here. So they laughed him to scorn. He said, give place. The maid is not dead, but sleepeth. <laughs> that's sleep? No, bro, that's not sleep. They laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in, took her by the hand, and the maid arose. When your life placed demands on heaven, 
when your life, not your words, because he didn't say, notice what he said, but when the people were put forth, he went in. He took her by the hand. Notice, he's not even speaking here. According to Matthew's writing, Jesus didn't open his mouth here. He just in the place and he takes her by the hand and the little maid arose. He didn't say, wake up, baby. Wake up. He didn't say, get up. God bless you, Ma. God bless you. Mother White, God bless you. I see you and thank God for you. Amen. Amen. He didn't say, baby, get up and be healed. He didn't do that, but he took her by her hand and the maid arose because his life is putting demands on heaven. Now, he is the word of God and he can definitely speak, but he's showing us here, let your life put demands on heaven. And that's what's taking place. His life is doing the thing for him. The last time he spoke at this setting was he said, give place but the maid is not the maid is not dead but sleepeth and they laughed him to scorn he goes in takes her by the hand the maid arose what is it that Jesus see that you don't see how come you're not seeing what he sees see what he sees see the same thing that he sees be in tune with what he sees let your eyes gaze upon the same thing that he's gazing upon don't be something different because he's going to say, all right, all right, is that what you call it? Then so be it. So be it done unto you. <laughs> so be it done unto you. Is that what you want? So be it done unto you. But when the people were put forth, took her by the hand, the maid arose, and the fame thereof went abroad unto all the land. When Jesus departed thence, two blind men, followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when, he, and when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus says unto them, Jesus says unto them, Hallelujah. Yeah. And Jesus says unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? Believe me. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They are asking Jesus, Son of David, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. Jesus says unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Their faith was at a place of healing. Their faith was at a place that it says, I need this. I've got to have this. I am going to leave here with my healing today. I, I, I've got to do it. I will no longer be blind. I'll never be blind again. I'll never be broke again. I'll never be in bondage again. I'll never be lost again. I'll never live in sin again. I'll never receive this kind of hurt again. Because they came. Are you able to believe? Do you believe this? Or do you believe this? Believe ye that I'm able to do this. You want to see. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? You want to be whole of cancer. Do you believe I am able to do this? You want to get out of prison. Do you believe I am able to do this? Or are you looking for the warden to do something? Are you looking for the governor to do something? Are you looking for the jailer to do something? Are you looking for somebody else to do something? What are you looking for? Do you believe? Believe ye that I am able to do this? This is what Jesus is saying. Well, I believe you're able to do it, but I got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. I believe you're able to do it, but uh, I want to see what my lawyer going to say. I believe you're able to do it, but uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> you know, you having some problems. Get to the place that you can actually say, I believe that you can do this. And Lord, my faith is in you. My hope is in you. My trust is in you. My whole resolve is in the fact that you got this. I believe you. Why? Because the next word out of his mouth, didn't touch he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. 
according to your faith. Things going to happen according to your faith, your healing, the progression of your healing, the time span, however long it's going to take, going to be upon your faith. According to your faith, be it done unto you. Your faith. Hallelujah. Not long ago, my mother had suffered a stroke and caught COVID. A full stroke and COVID. Could not move her right hand. The stroke was on her left side, which affected all of her right side. Couldn't move her hand, her right hand, her left leg, uh, her right leg. And because of that, she couldn't even move her leg at all. She was just dead weight. And, um, but when this happened, and we were thinking that mom um, couldn't understand because of like it was a memory loss. But she, in that memory loss time, she kept calling on Jesus. She kept calling on Jesus. And when she couldn't call on Jesus, she just simply said, amen. <laughs> she just gave it to him, amen. Do you understand me? Amen. Amen. And all her word was just simply, amen, 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 Jesus, amen, amen. You didn't understand. We didn't understand. We were thinking she was going in place of delirious or something like that, but she, amen, amen. And I knew that she knew what was going on. But you know what? In a short time, a very short time, mom's moving her right hand. Mom moving her left hand. <laughs> I remember the day when I asked her, Mom, I need you to take your hand. I need you to touch me. Lift it up. And she couldn't do it. I said, do your left hand. She could lift it. I said, I do the right hand. She would look at it, but it wouldn't move. I said, on your toe, your right toe, just, just move it. She would look at it, wouldn't move. I said, move your left toe, and she would move it. So she knew what was being said, but she had no movement. Why am I bringing this up? Because according to her faith, she said, God not going to leave me like this. God has been a blessing to me for 88, 80 plus years and have never failed me. And he's not going to fail me now. He's always been there for me. So why should I doubt him now? And when I'm looking at that, I thank God because today she's walking, getting into everything. <laughs> oh, Lord, I come in, Mom, Mom, where you at? Where you at? Hey, hey, where you at? <laughs> where you at? I'm here. I'm here. And, and she's moving. I see the walker. I see the wheelchair. The wheelchair is empty. The walker is empty. And she's all over the place. She, she, she go in the house. She, matter of fact, the other day I was outside working on a vehicle. And from the front of the house to where I was at, probably about a good 100 yards. No, about 150 to two, almost 200 yards. It's larger than a football field to get to where I'm at. And then she had to go around some things. That even make it longer. How about she came up where I was? <laughs> and sat down in a chair just to see about me. She walked all the way out there. Of course, she wasn't in no speed, but she had a walking stick. And she walked with the stick, just came out, had a chair sitting for her. Of course, actually, did you want to come out? Of course, and uh, she and my sister. But they came out. Mom walked out by herself and sat in the chair and was just... Uh, reading a book while I was working on this vehicle, all up under the vehicle working. And we were, man, mom was having Sunday school. What I'm telling you, I'm telling you this because according to your faith, so be it done unto you. So according to your faith, so be it done unto you. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. But God is faithful to all of his children and he will bring you out. Oftentimes when we go through things, we panic. Oftentimes we don't know how it's going to be, how it's going to look. She has never been in the hospital except to deliver babies. And I thank God. But this time, she, even though she didn't want to go, uh, her thing was, I trust God. Her mind, her spirit, I trust God. And I thank God because she's moving. Thank God she's moving. Hallelujah. 
Oh, praise God. Mama, that's right. I see you, Mama White. And she said, oh, praise God, been waiting to hear that praise report. That's right, Mother. She is up and at him and doing fine. She is, she answers her phone herself. She, she, she move about herself. She do whatever. She says, one day I, I was sitting at the house. She says, I told her I had to run an errand. She said, go and do it. I said, no way him with you. I don't, I'm not handicapped. <laughs> Mama say, I'm not helpless. No, she didn't say I'm handicapped. She said, I'm not helpless. I am not helpless. I'll take care of my own self. I said, Mom, just, just want to make sure I will take care of my own self. When she first started walking, I was by, I was behind her, and, and I would pray. I'm like, Lord, this, this, don't let Mama fall. I said, you know what? She's going to keep trying. Ain't no need to tell them not to do it. But, Lord, don't let her fall. Don't let her fall. Don't let her fall. The Lord have kept her. Not because of my prayer, but God has honored her life, her life. Her life placed demands on heaven. Whether she's speaking or not, her life has placed demands on heaven. Let your life place demands on heaven. You don't have to open your mouth and say, I command the heavens to hear my words and, and open heaven. Let there be an open heaven tonight and rain. No, just let your life do it. You don't have to use those words. Just let your life do it. And heaven will honor your life. Jesus walked into the room. He didn't say nothing to the girl. He just walked in, took her by the hand, and she got up. Hallelujah. And in this case, the two blind men, he said, believe that I am able to do this. They said unto him, yea, Lord. Then touch he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus strictly charged them, saying, see that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad their fame in all that country. Now, uh, Matthew said, he told them, don't tell nobody. If Jesus telling them, don't tell nobody, I'm pretty sure he had a very good reason. I know one situation, he told a man that had the leprosy. He said, don't even tell nobody. Why? Do what you're supposed to do. In that instant, he wanted that man to go to show himself to the priest. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get off key. Just go and do what you're supposed to do. And get and then give glory to God. Give those gifts that you're doing, your offering sacrifice. Give that and offer that gift. Offer those gifts. And uh, according to uh, the writings of Moses, what the Lord told him. In this case, he said, see that no man know it. But you know what? He told it anyway. <laughs> he told it anyway. And in telling it, his fame are spread abroad in all of the country. Our final subtopic, our final subtopic of uh, this Matthew chapter nine, chapter nine, and we're at um, verse twenty, um, verse thirty-two. Our subtopic: Our Savior is in need of workers. Believers are not so. Uh, our Savior is in need of workers slash believers who are not so needy are fearful. Let's look at this. Verses 32 through 38. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. People of God, if you come in contact with people who are dumb and they can't hear, or whatever is going on in their life, it is not supposed to be. If Jesus cast them out, He's not gonna. Or he's not gonna cast out something that's supposed to be in you. So if he casting it out, it's not supposed to be in you. So when you find this person who's dumb, Hallelujah, Amen. Who's dumb? As they were out, as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. When the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. The multitude marvelled, saying, "It was never so seen in Israel." That they know this man was dumb. They know that he was, he, he, he didn't have any cognizance uh, 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 sense. He didn't have no recollection. He did. He was dumb. Not, not, not because he couldn't just add and read or hear. He was dumb. You say, well, he was void of education. No, this was a different dumb. Uh huh. And when the devil was cast out of him, he was possessed with devils. And Jesus knew exactly what to do. 
These devils tried to make him just um, not hear, not see, don't care, just whatever. Just dumb, un void of learning, void of understanding. Uh, so when the Pharisees saw this, because they're always going to be a hater. They're always going to be a hater. The people marveled, saying it was never so seen in Israel. This is the first time seeing demons like this come out. The dumb, I mean, just up speaking. But the people said, he casted out devils through the prince of devils. Now, you know, you're going to always have those haters. Jesus went about all the city. Now, notice, there is a place. Matthew just chose not to capitalize or deal with this. But there's another writer who deal with this. We're going we're gonna to explore that later. But that writer dealt with that and because Jesus had some words for those who said, for he cast out devils by the prince of devils. But Matthew just continues on and says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness, not some, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Let me read 34 again. But the Pharisee says he casted out devils through the prince of devils. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues. Now, some would say preaching would be the best method. Jesus' method here is teaching. For those persons who want to go out and evangelize, and you feel that I can't do evangelism effectively because I can't preach. Jesus weren't preaching. He was simply teaching the word of God. He was teaching them. And that teaching gained audience. And if you would go forth with the ability to just teach, just talk on what you know, God would give you what to say and how to say it. And not only will he give you what to say and how to say it, your life will bring the results. People will see, and, and, and you know what? And you'll know, <laughs> you'll know when you're on point because you're going to stir up some devil. They're going to manifest. And when they do, just continue in the vein in which you're in. Continue in the vein. Don't get out of the vein. Stay in the vein. And you always have a devil that's going to show up. That's going to try to undermine you. Going to try to care nothing about you. Go against what you're doing. Make all this noise. And you're going to have to deal with it. And when you deal with it, that's going to be the icebreaker. That's the, going to be the thing that's going to catapult your ministry. When that thing has been dealt with, there are some, the enemy follows your ministry everywhere you go until you deal with it. And when you deal with it, then things happen. Let me say this to somebody. I feel it in my spirit. Right now, your ministry is mediocre. And you want it to go. And you're wondering, how come it's not going? How come it's not growing? But everywhere you go and you're doing your ministry, you always have something negative. Something always show up. And it put a chokehold on your ministry and it's not moving. It's not going to move until you deal with that issue. It's not going to move until you deal with those sickness, deal with those disease, deal with that blindness, deal with that leprosy, deal with that palsy, deal with it. And that's when your fame, that's when the fame of what you walk in is going to take a whole nother leap. That's when the God in you begin to draw Hallelujah. You better hear this. Somebody is listening. And I know you know this because it is evident. Because you always have an agitator with you. You don't see it as an agitator. But when you deal with that agitator, notice what happens. Notice what happened. And they went, went out. Behold, they brought a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, the multitude marveled, saying, it has never so seen in Israel. Trust me, that right there will draw people. That right there will draw. Why? Because this is not hocus pocus. This is not some palm reader. This is not some witchcraft stuff. This is not some hoodoo, voodoo, you do, goo -doo. No, this ain't that. This is the power, pure, raw power of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But then you gonna always have the haters too. They're going to go to church. They're going to be in the crowd looking. Them haters are going to come. And hear what the haters said. 
Pharisee said he cast out devils through the press of devils. They always got something negative to say. And Jesus went about, he didn't even deal with it. Well, he, he, if, he deal, if he dealt with this, Matthew is not talking about it. Matthew is capitalizing on something else. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness, every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, I told you they were coming. When he saw the multitude, people are going to come. When the breakthroughs start happening, <laughs> you say, it ain't happened yet. I'm about to give up. Oh, that's what you wanted. That's the devil wants you to give up. The devil wants you to throw in the towel. You've been doing this for how long and you haven't seen increase and you haven't seen growth. The devil wants you to stop. That's not the time to stop. That's the time to keep going. Hallelujah. And deal with those agitators. Deal with those haters. Deal with those envious ones. Deal with those distractors. Deal with those who always want to work outside what you're doing. Deal with that. Hallelujah. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then says he to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his vineyard. When you get to a place and you're going and then look like every empty building is a church, every playground is a church, <laughs> every school is a church, and you start seeing this, no matter where you go, you just start seeing a church, a church of people a people of a church. You're just seeing multitudes of souls. Don't stop it. Become more hunger. Become more hungry about this. Why? Because God's trying to show you something. You are lining yourself up because you start seeing the, you, you, you start having compassion on them who look like they don't know Christ. They don't know him. And you start hungering for righteousness. You start longing to do something about this. Every now and then you get a little glimmer. You get a little something to pique your curiosity or to pique your interest or to pique your hunger or to prick your, 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 your thirst for soul winning. And everything around you start looking like an opportunity. Don't run from it. Invite it. Move into it. Do the thing that God has called you for. Then says he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. He want laborers. He want laborers. He want people who are not so uh, uh, fearful. He want people who are not so needy. It's time to go out, but you're so busy with your personal needs that you can't see a focus on the needs of others. Get to a place in your life where you put God first. You put his business first. You put his people first. And when you begin to put God first, his people first, God's going to do some great things in your life. Do that and watch God. Do that and watch how things are going to change for you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. Let there be a hunger in our hearts. Let there be a longing in our souls. God, let us run after you like we have never ran before. Let everything we see, God, let's see it as an opportunity. An opportunity to broadcast your word, to, to honor you, to speak of you, to testify of you, to talk about you. Every place we go, on the billboard, let us see opportunities. Community, let us see opportunities. Schools, let us see opportunities. On jobs, let us see opportunities. Everywhere we go, let us see opportunities of soul winning. Of soul winning. And bringing someone out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Father, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for how you're doing it. And I pray your choices, blessings upon this people. That you'd keep them, God. 
everyone that you've placed in our care. Keep all of them in Jesus' mighty name. Father, every person who partook of this time of Bible study, I pray your choicest blessings upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep your little ones from harm, from the hands of the enemy. God, keep their minds, keep their thoughts, keep their attitude, keep them is my prayer in Jesus' mighty name. If you do not know the Lord as your Savior, make this a time that you come to him. He will in no wise cast you out. Make this the time when you say, Lord, I invite you into my life. Come, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my mind. Come into me. Come, come to me. I want to know you. Forgive me of all of my sins. And I confess my sins before you. And I believe that you would save me, that you would deliver me, and I'd never be the same ever again. Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you for turning my life around. Your word says, excuse me, hallelujah. Your word says that you are faithful and just to forgive us for all unrighteousness. Cleanse us from all sins. Father, save us this day. Save us from evil. That if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Father, save your little ones in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. We'll be back tomorrow, Lord's willing. Same time, same place, same station. God bless you, Golden Girl Felicia, Evelyn Carter. God bless you all. God bless you, Lord's people. Go in the strength of the Lord and know the Lord's hand is upon your life. I'll say this again. And know that the hand of the Lord is upon your life. Mother White, God bless you. Amen. The hand of the Lord is upon your life. Amen. Amen. And I will tell Mother Williams that you said hello. I will definitely tell her. Amen. God bless you. And I give a hug for you. All right. All right. Be blessed, everyone. Go in the strength of the Lord. Be blessed.